Yeah, hello, thanks for stopping by. Um, so what we want to show you here is a method with which you can render large point clouds with a continuous level of detail in real time and in virtual reality. And the problem we are trying to solve here is that state-of-the-art methods for point clouds, uh, they use discrete level of detail structures where you have a sudden and harsh uh, transition of density as you go from one level of detail to the other. So um, for example, here you can see you have a pretty good density and then all of a sudden a very, very low one. And this is especially a big problem um, during motion and if you have a lower level of detail. And in virtual reality, because of the high performance requirements, we have to render at a low level of detail. And during motion, this can look like this here. So you get this popping of uh, chunks of points and we're trying to fix this with continuous level of detail. So uh, what we want to have is this continuous transition. So we don't have level of detail zero, one, two, three. We also have anything in between. And we end up with some kind of uniform distribution of points in screen space. Um, the basic idea behind our method is that we want to sample the point cloud in a way so that uh, we have a certain target spacing, so a certain spacing between points at a certain distance. For example, at a distance of one meter, we may want to have a spacing of around uh, one millimeter between each point, and at a distance of 10 meters, we want to have 10 times the distance. The data structure that we're going to use for this is actually uh, pretty much the same that most state-of-the-art um, methods for point clouds use. It's a series of subsamples of the original point cloud. So we have um, a very coarse representation of the whole point cloud. In this case, it's a point cloud where the point spacing is 80 meters. So uh, we have a point and the next HSN point is at least 80 meters uh, um, away from that. And then with each level, this spacing, this point spacing is half. So 40 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters, and so on. And at runtime, we want to render only the points where the point spacing, so this spacing in our hierarchy, is larger than the target spacing, so uh, the desired spacing that we want to have. If you do this with, with this discrete structure here, we end up with something like this. So we still have this sudden transition from one level of detail to another. And in order to fix this, we just use a simple heuristic. We simply um, randomize this spacing here. So all the points in here, they are in level zero of our, our hierarchy and they have a point spacing of 80 meters. So what we're going to do is we simply randomize this level. So we add a value of zero to one to it. So points in here, they now have a level of zero to one, one to two, two to three, and so on. And you can directly convert this to uh, a point spacing that's also randomized. So now this is going to have a point spacing value of 80 to 40 meters, 40 to 20 meters, and so on. The actual structure of the points doesn't really change, but it helps us to do this filtering operation here. And if we do this with this randomized structure, we end up with this smooth transition in a kind of a differ-like pattern. Um, so this is a video that uh, shows you what this looks like in runtime. So it's a very low level of detail now, just to show you how this works. And at the center here, we have a high level of detail. And when we get closer, we get an even higher level of detail in, at this region here. And to the right, you can see this is a bird's eye view from this region here. And as the user moves towards it, the po uh, additional points are added. And as the user moves away, points are discarded again. And all of this happens in a pointwise fashion, so we don't have these chunks, and it happens with uh, this continuous level of detail. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so this target spacing that we're using here, it's first dependent on the distance to the viewer. So the, uh, the farther away, the less uh, density and the higher the spacing between the points. But for virtual reality, it's also dependent on the distance to the center of the screen. And that's because um, due to the distortions of the lenses, uh, we actually can't really see all the um, detail in the periphery. And that's not because of the perception of the eye, it's really a hardware issue. So we're rendering all this, uh, usually we're rendering all this detail at the periphery. It's not necessary, so we're going to discard points here, render the lower density, and because we don't have this connectivity uh, as with triangles, we end up with holes here. But in order to fix these holes, we can simply set the point size 
to the target, sp target spacing that we're using to filter the points. So if our target spacing is one meter, that means we uh, only want to have one point every meter. So we are going to set the point size to one meter as well. Um, if we do it like that, the, we get, end up with another problem, and that's um, if we move towards a region, additional points are added, but they're added at a certain size. For example, they're added uh, immediately with a size of five pixels or 10 pixels, or if you have a very low quality at 20 pixels. So this is again very noticeable. You have points popping in at a certain size. So what we do is we also fade them in by growing and shrinking them first. And what this looks like is like this here. So if you look to the right here, as the user moves away from this fire extinguisher, points are removed, but they don't disappear immediately. They are shrinked, and as he approaches the fire extinguisher, they grow again. The implementation that we're using here, uh, this is right now an in-core math part, uh, where we simply we store all the points in one buffer here. So this is our buffer that contains all the points of our point cloud. And each point also stores this, uh, uh, its level in the hierarchy, which kind of correlates with the point spacing that we're using for filtering. And then we use a compute shader to iterate over all these points here and only uh, store those points in another buffer that uh, should be rendered according to uh, this condition here. So point spacing should be larger than target spacing. And because this is mostly just a simple copy operation, we're basically uh, limited by the bandwidth of the GPU and we end up with a performances of uh, 17 million points per millisecond for a 1080 or 40 million points per millisecond for a 2080 Ti. So um, our test data set uh, was mostly a point cloud with 86 uh, million points. And on a 2080 Ti, this can be downsampled to uh, around two to four million points for rendering uh, in about 2.2 milliseconds. So this leaves us enough time to downsample and then render the model twice. On a 1080, um, it takes about five milliseconds, so it doesn't leave us enough time to render it uh, twice for virtual reality for 90 frames per second. So what we're going to do here is that we do this downsampling over the course of a few frames. So uh, in each frame, we spend one millisecond for downsampling, and after five frames, we have this new model. And then we're going to use this mo new model for the next five frames until we have another new model. And yeah, I'm just going to show you some more uh, videos here of the results. So um, to the left, this is the discrete level of detail method and points colored by the level of detail. And you can see all these chunks that appear and disappear as you move around in the scene. And then to the right, we have the continuous version where points are handled individually and you can, can't see any chunks and yeah, have a nice continuous transition here. And here's another video, um, again with the 86 million points and colored now. It's a uh, building site from NVIDIA's new headquarter and um, this is special difficult for state-of-the-art methods because of the structure of the points here. So usually you use something like an arc tree or a KD tree to render something like that. But these tree structures, they don't align very well with all these beams and uh, noise in this uh, uh, um, data set here. Since we're just copy, uh, iterating over all points and copying the one that we need, uh, we are not really bound by how these points are structured. So it doesn't really matter. And uh, all of this is done here. Um, 86 million points, downsampled to 3 million points, and then rendered twice, and actually three times here because of this bird's eye view in a single frame. So um, in conclusion, uh, we found that you can do a continuous level of detail rendering of point clouds uh, by simply randomizing a state of the art discrete level of detail structures. And um, we uh, shown you an in core implementation that we tested right now for up to 100 million points. Works very well for that. And we think that this is very likely applicable to uh, some kind of hierarchical tree structures as well. But as part of future work, we'd like to find optimal ways to really do that because uh, there are going to be some issues that we want to tackle. Um, if you want to take a look at the source code, there are two links here. The first one contains the compute shader that we're using for the downsampling and the vertex shader. And the second one contains the complete source code. And uh, as a part of our live coding framework for virtual reality, which we're also going to present as a poster on Tuesday. Thanks.
Thanks for that talk. Does anybody have any questions for um, for Marcus? Yeah, good. Great. Hi. Uh, just a question. You you say you randomly select points that that are being culled. Um, so, so is it really random, or is it a kind of weight that you add in advance? Because it looks rather stable. Yeah? If it would be random, then you would randomly select and deselect points, right? Um, and it doesn't look like that. Yeah, it's a sort of random factor that we add to each point. So the mm -hmm. points has a, all the points have a level of 0, for example, in the first level. Mm -hmm. And then we randomize it to level 0 to 1. And this is the same for the point over um, the okay. co course of a few frames. So they're called the same okay. way over time. So would it then make sense to kind of compute or pre-compute an, an optimal order to thin out that point set and to, to take that weight? Yeah, because uh, if it's random, yeah, it is known that, that there will be holes at some place and yeah. overdraw at others. So it, it would be rather easy to optimize that. Probably, yeah. So originally okay. we tried to do some kind of ordering by farthest first and uh, kind of use that mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. our order with which to discard the points. But this is a very slow structure to generate, and uh, this is something that can be done at runtime. So okay. you just mm -hmm. take this existing structure, mm -hmm. randomize it at runtime in your vertex shader or a computer shader, and uh, okay. it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Great. Do we have some more questions? We have quite a bit of time left. Any questions? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the microphone, yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Could you please go back to the slide where you're showing the uh, sort of the, some baseline method where the tiles are popping in and out. Um. Uh, yeah, but for one? example, this one. Yeah. I was wondering, why, uh, why can't you, in this uh, method, also fade in and out the LOD tiles? You can also fade it in and out, but you still have these chunks here, and uh, you're going to notice it. So we have some other uh, point cloud renderer where somebody before me did that, but it's something that's noticeable still. I mean, uh, it would be nice if you would show, because this, this blinking kind of makes it look exaggerated. Also in your results, you have the colors uh, in addition to this tile blinking, which I think maybe are exaggerating the effect. I would just be curious to see how it looked uh, when it's faded mm -hmm. as, as future work when you're comparing your results. OK, yeah. Thank you. Great, good point. Any other questions? Great. Well, let's thank our speaker again. So that's the end of the session. I think now we have the...